All right, I want to go over the um, some templates here for the foam wing. So this is a plan view right here. They got a root and tip uh, airfoil. And this plastic laying over the top of this uh, plan is sea temp. And what I've done here, I've made a line, scored a line with this brand new number 11 right down this center line. I've just scored that right here. And the next step is, is the double check and you can see through the plastic and make sure that line is where it needs to be. That it's straight. Also, you got to figure out on what side of the line you're going on. So with this uh, root template here, it's a pretty fat line. It's probably about a sixteenth of an inch thick. So. What I've done is sort of measured the trailing edge back here and the uh, leading edge is going to be a rolled balsa. It's going to be formed on a shuck and then laid over the top of the foam so there's not going to be a leading edge quarter inch strip of wood here. So you got to decide what side of the line you're going on here or center. So in this case since it's going to be sheeted with 16th or um, cap strips or whatever, so the 16th will go over the top of the foam, which will bring it back up to this dimension here. So I'm going to cut it on the inside of the line to compensate for the sheeting. And I'm going to come through here and slowly cut. I'm not cut, but I'm scoring. And I'm staying right on the inside of this line. And if there's parts of this cut that are a little high, preferably go high or too big, you can always sand them after the fact. Um, try to make it, if anything, a little oversized, not undersized. So as you can see, I'm just inching along here, trying to get accuracy. All right. Now with C temp, it's a material where if you bend it, on the score, it'll actually break. And it's important that you don't go too fast. A brand new 11 blade, and I mean brand new, never been touched to anything. And that gives you a nice score. The uh, sharper the score is, the cleaner the break. So unless you're perfect, which I've never gotten one completely perfect. You're going to have, you're going to run your finger over this and you're going to feel waviness. So what I do is I take some uh, sandpaper, pretty fine, maybe 320. And what I do is I sand this sea temp. And all I'm doing here is not changing the shape. I'm just trying to take the little high bumps off. And if for some reason you mess it up and you can't get the C-temp right, don't worry, you just cut another one. Now this C-temp was purchased out of 
the Toledo show years and years ago. And I'm sure the guy is not in the sea tent business anymore. But if you go to a some kind of plastic supply house and try to get some type of plastic like this, it won't be exactly the same, but you want something relatively thick where you can score it and break it. It'll work. I've used other plastics besides sea temp. This is my favorite, but um, I've had other stuff and I got it to work. So I'm starting to get a, a really nice smooth transition. Okay, so I'm going to double check this to the plan. So it looks like it's looking really good. Maybe it's a little thick here. And when I make the Formica templates, I've always made them come to a point. And then I change it later to go through the cutter. So now that you've sanded this and you're going to feel like a little burr there, I just take the uh, number 11 down in here at the base and I scrape. Okay, so I've got these... Um, half airfoil representations here of the, the root and the tip. And I've sanded these sea temps and made them nice and uh, smooth. Cleaned off the fuzz. Double checked that I've got a, a perfect match of my airfoil. And the next step is once you get the half airfoil is find a piece of phenolic or if it's not phenolic it's a countertop material this stuff here is laminate now the thing is with these uh, these pieces of laminate you know they'll have a bow to them so you've got to look at them and <clears throat> make sure that it's flat enough these these will be flat enough They're, they've got a slight bow but I'll make them work, but the ideal is have the uh, 16th inch phenolic. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to establish a center line here. And I'm just marking out where this template's going to go to make sure I have enough material. Okay, so the same blade I cut the uh, C-temp with. I'm going to scribe a line in this formica or phenolic or whatever you have. So instead of cutting it, I'm going to flip the blade over upside down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scratch a line through this coating. And it'll break the tip of this blade. You're ruining the blade, but at this point, it doesn't matter. So now, I don't know if you can see it, you've got a literally a hairline groove, a scratch mark in this uh, Formica. That's going to be the reference for the center line of this template. And I'll do the same thing here on the root. I'll lay this thing out and make sure I've got enough uh, room. So I mark it with a pen. Roughly how long I scribe it. Let's see here. 
make sure I have enough room. And do the same thing here for the root template. Okay, so the next step I take tape and I put usually three pieces of tape on it. You don't want to tape the whole thing because you got to be able to see where this line's at. <clears throat> so find a nice clean spot in this line. And then I'm going to tape this C temp directly on that line. Now if you uh, if you decide to go right on top of the line when you flip this over to get the mirror image you want to line it up the same way. So what I'm looking at here this bottom of this C temp is laying right on top of that line and at this point I'm going to trace around it with a, the sharpest ballpoint pen you can get. I use these Zebra's Fine Point. Make sure you don't push in hard enough to distort this template, especially back here where it gets thin. So now you've got a super fine line and that's going to be your cut line. So reverse your tape reverse your template and line it up exactly like you had the other side and the way I line it up <clears throat> I line it up just on top of that line so I can I can still see that hairline so it doesn't disappear it's sitting right on top of it and then once you get that lined up, trace around this side. So by flipping this template and doing the mirror image, as long as you line it up correctly, guarantees you have a symmetrical airflow. And there's another step I do in the process once this template is cut that I can double check it. So what I want when I cut this thing out, I want to make sure this thing comes all the way down to the hairline. I want this intersection of the top and bottom of this airfoil to line up perfectly with this scribe center line. Because then what I'll do, I'll draw a piece or draw a line on a piece of paper and I'll lay this template to where that point hits the line and I'll flip it over, line the point up after tracing around it to make sure that it's symmetrical. Which I'll go over that and explain it. So I'm going to do the tip template just the way I did the root here. <clears throat> 